Now you've seen a lot of tutorials on Rigify and how they use templates to rig characters, but they always fail to show the secret menu that allows you to add extra bones and layers. So in this video, we're gonna walk through how you can use that feature so that you can use Rigify to rig any type of character. So that you can follow along easily, I'm going to give you this model away for free. I've actually covered how to model this character in a different tutorial, which I'll link below. And if you like the animation you saw in the opening, I just released a Skillshare course on walk cycles, including how to animate this character. Let's dive in and learn how to rig this character. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So let's cut to the point and show where that secret menu is in Rigify. So here I have a rigging template of a basic humanoid. If I tab it into edit mode here, and I come over here to the armature data tab, and I scroll down to the Rigify section and twirl everything down, come to the bottom, you'll see that we have the sample section here. And under here, there's all these samples that are labeled. It's quite a big list. Now it's important to understand that the templates Rigify gives you are made up of these samples. So when you click generate rig, it's looking at those samples and generating controls based on these preset samples that are included. So for example, here we have the arm system that is one sample and we have the leg system that is another sample. So you can actually delete these if you delete the entire sample section and generate a rig. So if you wanted to make a one-armed, one-legged humanoid character, you could just delete these samples. And when you click generate rig, you shouldn't have any issues. You can also add. So if we wanted to add an extra arm, I can come over here and see there's a body IK arm. And if I add that, you can see that's actually just the same arm there. So if you wanted to create a character with four sets of arms, you could do that. So this is where the sample features is. And the nice thing about that is, is that when you generate rigs, since all these samples are included in Rigify, you will get all those nice controls automatically added. So that's the basics of this sample menu. And now let's look at how we can use this to apply a rig to our character with some custom bones. So if you've downloaded the sample project file, you should be able to follow along here. And we're just gonna go shift add armature and we're going to add a basic human rig to get us started. To make this a bit easier to position over our character, we're gonna come down to the viewport display under the armature data tab and we're going to click on in front. This will make it appear in front at all times. And now let's go about adjusting this to the size of our character. So first things first here, I'm gonna tab into edit mode here and I'm just gonna get rid of the left side of the character because we're gonna symmetrize at the end and automatically generate all these bones. So let's just get rid of this to make it a little bit easier to position over our character. Perfect. Now I'm going to take the rest of the rig here. I'm going to select all with A and I'm going to change my transform pivot point to 3D cursor. And I'm just going to scale this down until I get to where the leg is about the size that it needs to be here. Now I'm going to grab the whole leg section here and I'm just going to move that over the center of the leg and check that in both views to make sure that it matches. Great, we'll grab the hip bone here and I'm just going to bring that back over so it's close to that leg again. Now we're going to grab the arm section here. We're just going to move that out of the way over here for now. Next, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hide this bone so it's not in my way. I'm going to grab this bottom tail bone right there. I'm going to hit Shift S cursor to select it. Now I'm going to grab everything here and then I'm going to scale up so that it kind of matches our character there. And I'm gonna stop when the head reaches the base of the head there. Now I'm going to grab this top bone here and then with the G key, I'm going to press Z so that I can move that up on the Z axis and just bring that to the top of the head. Now let's position the arm bone here. I'm also going to move the chest bone over slightly and the shoulder bone over here. So let's go ahead, grab the base of this bone, bring it up there, bring this bone here, and bring this bone here. We're gonna bring that bone there. Now I'm just gonna check in the other views and make sure that it doesn't need to be any more centered. I'm also going to change from 3D cursor here to median point and scoot that forward. So with that, I'm pretty happy with the basic placement of the armature on our character. So now I'm going to select all these bones and I'm going to hit symmetrize. And if it doesn't symmetrize correctly, check down here and you may need to change it to the correct direction. Great, now we're ready to begin adding some of those custom bones. Let's take a moment to talk about our sponsor. Classes on Skillshare are designed to learn by doing and they're usually around 40 to 60 minutes long. If you're a creative person like me or if you're trying to learn a new skill, Skillshare is perfect for you. One thing I really love about Skillshare is its learning paths. And what their learning paths do is collect a few courses together that are related to a similar topic and really help you deep dive into a skill set. There's quite a bit of Blender 3D content on Skillshare as well, including courses from the amazing Derek Elliott and Smeef as well. 
I have a lot of classes on Skillshare too, really focused on building up professional skills with classes like your first character model, your first texturing, and your first character animation. The great thing about Skillshare is that with just one simple subscription, you get access to so many amazing courses. The first 500 people to click my link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Check it out now. So with my 3D cursor selected, I'm gonna to come to the end of the sword here and I'm just going to shift click there. I'm gonna tab into edit mode here and we're going to add a basic pivot. And that's just gonna add one simple bone. So click add sample there and I'm going to grab this bone right here and hit shift S, selection to cursor. I'm gonna come down here. I'm going to shift right click the tip of the sword, grab this bone right here and hit shift S, selection to cursor. Now we can grab that bone and we can rotate it if we need. So you can come up here over the item menu on the end panel and you can change that roll if you want just to get it so that it's oriented with the sword a little bit better. So I want my bone to kind of match the rotation of my sword. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my rotation to about there, and that'll just make it about the same angle. Perfectly. Now we're going to name this bone sword. So with that pivot bone selected, I'm just going to name that sword. Now I'm going to show you a neat trick. If I were to generate this rig right now, it would put the control down here at the bottom at the base of the bone. So I actually wanna switch the direction of the bone. And a cool thing you can do in Blender is if you search for switch, you'll find armature switch direction, and that will change the direction of the bone, and now it's facing the direction that I want it to. So next, I'm going to do the same thing for the ears here. I'm actually going to come inside of the head here and place my cursor there, and I'm going to add a rigify sample, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and go through the same exact process, and I'm going to then name this ear.l, and then I'll grab just that bone and type in symmetrize and put it to the other side. And you'll see that now we have a bone on both sides. So at this point, we're almost ready to generate our rig. But when you use a Rigify rig, you get all these great menus. Well, we can actually adjust that menu and add our own custom menu. First, what we wanna do is come over to our armature data tab and we wanna check the bone collections. And we're going to add one more. Let's just move this to the top and we're going to call this one special. And this is where we're gonna put our ears and our sword. So we will tab into edit mode here. We will grab both the ears and the sword. We'll come over here to the bone collections and assign it to that new special group. Now, when we generate a rig, we want this to also generate that special group on our menu over here, just for easy access. So we will come down here to the bone collection UI. And first we will grab that and change a color set. I'm just gonna change mine to the extra color set that already exists. Then what we can do is come down here to the UI layout. So this is what that little button menu is gonna look like that generates over here. So in edit mode here, with these bones selected, I'm going to go ahead and click this little arrow here, and that's going to set those as special. Now if I come back up here to the bone collections and I tap into edit mode and look at those three bones I have selected, I'll see that not only do they appear in the special, they also appear in the torso. You can see by that little dot right there. So I'm gonna grab torso and click remove. That way they're only under special. Now let's switch out to object mode here and let's name our rig. Let's call this cat.rig. Now we're ready to generate our armature. So if we come to the armature tab here and I twirl this up under rigify, we click generate rig. You'll see that now we have our rig set up and it's put in these custom bones for us. Now, if I go ahead and grab this here and turn on and off special, you'll see how it makes those disappear. So now we have this handy little menu here to control everything. But if you wanna go and change the look of these bones, you can grab the bone, come down here to the bone tab, and then under here under the custom object, you can change it to one of the other bones. So you can see that we have had a bunch of bones that were already added. You can also change the position of the bones. I recommend maybe changing the position of the ear bones. Let's look at how to do that. So we wanna translate these up on the Y axis. So we will translate this up on the Y so that it's center of the ear. And then if you want, you can scale all these down. If you click and drag across and do 0.5, and make sure that one stays negative 0.5, it will just bring down the size a bit. And you can go ahead and adjust any bone shapes that you want. I'm gonna do that now before moving on. Now we can take that original rig that we had and we can just delete that. We can grab this rig again, come back to the data, and again, click in front so that it is visible in front. And now we can see all of our controls. I also don't think that I need these heel bones or these toe bones because our character doesn't have feet that require those bones. So what you can actually do is grab all those and then put them in the leg 
tweak bone there and remove them from the leg IK. And then that way they'll just stay hidden and make your rig a bit cleaner. So after you've made the adjustments to your bones and you're happy with how everything looks, we're going to now work on actually applying this rig to our character. So you see right now it's not moving our character. So we will apply it through a method called weight painting. So let's look at how we can do that next. So let's grab our mesh here and then our armature, hit control P and automatic weights. Blender is going to automatically try and attach this object to our armature. Now, if we grab our armature here, we can see that it's mostly working, but some things aren't attached like the belt and the nose. So let's look at how we can go ahead and fix those various elements. Now, if I come over here to object mode, grab the mesh here and switch to weight paint mode, and we come over here to the vertex data tab, we can go into the vertex groups and see that there is now a vertex group for each bone. And if we click through there, we can see how those are all being attached. And this is just helpful to understand how things are being weight painted. You can also make adjustments here. For example, if I wanted to adjust the leg here, I can begin painting, but first I need to make a selection. So I'll tab back into edit mode, grab my leg there by pressing the L key, tab back it into weight paint mode, and I can begin adjusting this weight paint if I need. Up here, I can set the weight to one, the strength to one, and I can begin painting more than I want. Everything that is red will be maximum weight paint, and everything that is blue will be minimum weight paint. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. This is one way you can go ahead about correcting the weight paint on your mesh. The other thing you can do is also normalize all. What this will do is that if two bones are fighting for the same position there, and they're both trying to control the leg, by normalizing all, it will make sure that no vertex point ever exceeds the ability of one weight paint mode. So that's one way you can kind of quickly fix some issues with your mesh sometimes. The other thing you can do that's pretty helpful is you can also use the blur tool. So if you come down here to the smooth tool, you can actually turn this up and blur out your weight paints. This can be really helpful too if you notice that you have harsh edges in your weight paint. But let's look at how we can go about fixing the various elements that are broken here. So we will notice that our nose and not all of our collar pieces, our belt, and the sword are not attached. So let's attach those to our character. Let's attach the sword and ears first. Now you may notice that when we come over to the object mesh here, that there is no vertex group for the sword or the ears that we made. And if we grab our armature here and tab into edit mode here, you can see that's because our bone here, when selected under the bone tab, is not set to be a deformed bone. So Blender didn't even think that it should use these bones. So let's go and grab this deformed bone and just check that on. We'll grab each ear and check that on as well. Now we'll come back to our object mode. We'll come under here under vertex group, and I'm gonna go down here to the bottom and just add three bone group names. And we're just going to name these exactly the same as the three bones we have here. So sword, ear.l, and ear.r. Now we can tab into edit mode here. And another way that we can add the weight paint of our objects is with this assign mode over here. So you see down here that we have weight in one and zero. So if I grab all the pieces of the sword just by pressing L and grab the sword bone here and click assign a weight of one, I switch over to weight paint mode, you can see that that whole sword is now red when the sword vertex group is selected. If I come back out over here to object mode, switch back into pose mode and grab the sword, you can see now that I can begin controlling the sword. However, you see here that it's breaking apart and that's because the sword has been applied to some of these other bones and we want just this bone to control it. So what's essentially happening is the other bones are fighting for control over this. That's a good example of how I talked about how we can use the normalize all. But what we're going to do is tab back into edit mode here, and we can just go ahead and grab all these other ones with the weight of one and click remove. And by doing that, we'll just ensure that it has not been applied to any of these other bones. Once that's done, you see now we have complete control over the sword with this bone here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat that process with the ears, and then after that, I'm going to show you how to fix the clothing. Now it's worth noting that you can go ahead and click remove on all of these, but that might become tedious. So I know for a fact that this ear right here, ear.isle, when I assign, if I come up here, I know that when it automatically weight paints, it's going to do the bones near it. And I know that the bones nearest to it are spines zero, six, five, and four, which are the upper spine bones here. So I can just go ahead and remove from those few and likely we'll fix the issue. So when I come over to pose mode here, 
And that's just one way to save yourself a time a bit. You can assume that if it's fighting for weight paint from another bone, it's most likely a bone near it. Here's another issue where we're having a problem. If I grab this hand and move it, you can see how the body down here is fighting for control over that hand. Sometimes when you have oddly proportioned characters like this, Blender doesn't always know where to apply the weights. So this is just as simple as fixing everything else. I can just grab the body down here and just make sure that it is not attached to the hand at all. So I can go ahead and just remove all the hands that are on that side. And then when I move it, you can see that now that issue has been fixed. Now, if you remember, these collared spikes here were having an issue where they weren't connected at all. And I want to just go and attach them to the neck bone. Now, because of the way that it works, you'll notice over here that there is no neck bone. And that's because if you tap into edit mode here, there's actually deformation bones, control bones, and a lot of things that go into this very complex rig. So sometimes what you can do when you're trying to figure out which spine might be the one you're looking for is you can tap here into weight paint mode and you can click through the various spines. So I can see here that the spine 05 seems to be the neck. So I'm going to tab into edit mode here. I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these collarbones and I'm going to apply them to spine 5 and then I'm just going to remove them from the other nearby bones making sure they're not attached to the shoulder or anything like that. Now when I move my bone around and move my neck you can see that everything is attached there but you may notice that the ears are detached from the head. So we can grab the two ear bones here in edit mode and then we will grab the head bone and hit control P keep offset. Now when we switch back and pose our head you'll see that everything is attached. You may want to attach the sword bone as well. So tap back into edit mode, grab the sword bone there, and then you can choose a bone to attach to. I'm going to grab one of these bones down here, like the chest bone, and just use that one. Now this last trick I'm really excited to show you because this has saved me a ton of time. When I move my torso around, you'll notice here that it is not affecting the belt at all. It just didn't seem to know what to do with it. Well, check this out. We will grab the belt in edit mode. So tab into edit mode, and I'm going to select the belt buckle and the belt. I'm going to press P and separate by selection. Now we have the cat body and we have this belt as two separate objects. If I grab the cat body and then I grab this belt and then I tab into weight paint mode, I'm going to come up to weights and I'm going to transfer weights. And then I'm going to make sure data type is set to vertex groups. Vertex mapping is set to nearest vertex. I'm going to change the source layers by name and then all layers and replace. Now if I come over here, I can see that it's actually transferring the weight data from the body, which is the bottom of the spine here, to the belt. So now the weight painting has been transferred from this body to this belt. If I grab this belt and this body and click Control J, that will join the mesh again. And now when I move this around, you'll see that the belt is attached to the character. Isn't that a really cool time-saving technique? Now, I hope you found this useful. Rigging is incredibly complex and you may need to watch this video once or twice to fully follow along. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you can look at how we made this character in a separate tutorial on my channel. And if you're interested in learning how I animated the character, you can go ahead and check out my new Skillshare class. Likewise, I'll be putting these project files up on my Patreon, and I'm always grateful for you watching. Thank you.